I glanced out the window. A shiver ran down my spine. The sensation was subtle, but unmistakable. The feeling of being watched. I turned away, chiding myself for letting my imagination run wild. But unease settled in the pit of my stomach, a nagging suspicion that something was amiss. I shook off the feeling and returned to my book, determined to lose myself in its pages. But every so often, I couldn't help but glance at the window, my heart quickening with each passing glance. The darkness outside seemed to hold secrets that were just out of reach. And then, as if in response to my unease, a flash of movement caught my eye, a figure standing just beyond the edge of the forest, its form obscured by the shadows. My breath caught in my throat as I stared, my heart pounding. The figure was watching the house, its gaze fixed on the windows. It was as if it had been observing my every move, lurking just beyond my field of vision. Panic surged through me and I jumped to my feet, my thoughts racing. I moved to the window, my pulse quickening as I peered outside. The figure had disappeared, leaving behind only the rustling of leaves in the wind. My mind raced with questions. Who was this person? What did they want? The unease that had been simmering within me now boiled over into a full-blown fear. As I stood there, my breath visible in the cold night air, a soft sound reached my ears, the creak of a floorboard. I spun around, my heart in my throat, and looked towards the hallway leading to the front door. The sound had come from inside the house. Every instinct told me to flee, to call for help. But a surge of adrenaline compelled me forward. I moved towards the hallway, my footsteps silent as I strained to hear any further sounds. The house seemed to creak and settle around me, the quiet creating an eerie symphony. And then a faint glimmer caught my eye, a reflection of lamplight on a doorknob. The front door. It was as if the intruder was attempting to gain entry, to breach the sanctity of the house. Panic surged within me, my mind racing with the implications of the situation. I reached for my phone, my fingers trembling, and dialed 911. I spoke in hushed urgency, explaining the situation, my voice barely above a whisper. The dispatcher assured me that help was on the way and I thanked them, my heart racing. As I hung up the phone, a chill swept through the air, and I turned to the window. There, illuminated by the moonlight, was the figure once again this time standing on the porch, just outside the front door. Its gaze was fixed on me, its presence a chilling manifestation of intrusion and malevolence. Fear gripped me as I realized that the figure was not content to remain outside. It was here, inside the house, hunting me. The thought sent a surge of panic through my veins, and I backed away, my mind racing for an escape. I stumbled towards the back door, my heart pounding, my breath ragged. The figure's form appeared and disappeared in the shadows, a relentless force that seemed to close in with each passing moment. My fingers fumbled with the lock, and with a desperate surge of strength, I managed to open the door. I burst out into the cold night air, my breath visible in the frigid darkness. Adrenaline coursed through me as I ran, the sound of my own heartbeat drowning out everything else. The figure's pursuit was relentless, its presence a haunting specter that seemed to chase after me. I sprinted through the forest, branches clawing at me, my heart pounding in my chest. The house loomed behind me, its once comforting walls now a place of terror. My breath came in ragged gasps as I ran, the figure's footsteps echoing in my ears. And then, as if the forest itself had conspired against me, I stumbled and fell, my hands scraping against the rough ground. The figure loomed over me, its presence a suffocating weight. I scrambled to my feet, my mind a whirlwind of fear and desperation. I ran, my legs carrying me as fast as they could. The figure was close behind, its presence a chilling reminder of the danger that pursued me. But I refused to give in to the terror. With a surge of determination, I burst through the tree line and onto the road. A passing car screeched to a halt, its driver shouting something inaudible as they rolled down the window. Without hesitation, I threw myself into the car, my heart racing, my body trembling. The driver sped away, and I looked back, half expecting to see the figure chasing after me. But the figure was nowhere in sight. It was as if it had been swallowed by the darkness, vanishing as quickly as it had appeared. I sank back into the seat, a mix of relief and terror coursing through me, but the figure was nowhere in sight. It was as if it had been swallowed by the darkness, vanishing as quickly as it had appeared. I sank back into the seat, a mix of relief and terror coursing through me. As we drove away, the events of the night replayed in my mind like a relentless loop. The encounter with the figure had been a chilling intrusion, 
a manifestation of fear that had turned the sanctuary of the house into a realm of danger. As the car's headlights pierced the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that the figure was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the next opportunity to hunt. The night had left an indelible mark on my psyche, a reminder that even the familiar can become a realm of uncertainty and that the darkness can hold terrors beyond imagination. I had come to this cabin seeking solace, a refuge from the chaos of city life. But now, as the shadows danced along the walls, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not alone. The unease settled over me like a heavy fog, making the air thick with tension. As I stared into the flames, I heard it, a faint whisper carried on the wind. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I strained to listen, my ears perked up, trying to make sense of the unintelligible words that seemed to float through the air. Who's there? I called out, my voice barely above a whisper. The silence that followed was suffocating, broken only by the sound of my own breath. And then, just as I was about to dismiss the whisper as a trick of my imagination, it came again, louder this time, more insistent. The words seemed to be right outside the cabin, as if the wind itself was carrying them to my ears. A shiver ran down my spine and I got up, moving towards the window. I peered into the darkness, my heart racing, my breath caught in my throat. The moon cast a pale glow over the landscape, revealing the outline of trees and the ominous shape of the surrounding forest. Come to us, the whisper beckoned, the words now clearer, more distinct. It was a haunting melody that seemed to wrap around me, tugging at my very soul. Fear surged within me, but an inexplicable curiosity drove me forward. Without thinking, I grabbed a lantern and stepped outside. The wind was biting, cutting through my clothes like icy fingers. I moved towards the edge of the forest, the whisper growing louder with each step. Come to us, it urged, the words echoing in my ears, filling my mind with an intoxicating haze. My heart pounded, a mix of terror and fascination propelling me forward. And then, in the heart of the forest, I saw it. A clearing bathed in an eerie blue light. In the center stood a circle of figures, their forms indistinct and ethereal. The whispers seemed to emanate from them, a haunting chorus that resonated in the air. But there was something else in the clearing, something that hadn't been there before. A wooden board, worn and weathered, with strange symbols etched onto its surface. It seemed to radiate an energy, a connection to the figures that danced around it. I hesitated, my mind warring with my instincts, but something within me was drawn to the figures and the board, a magnetic pull that I couldn't resist. I stepped closer, the lantern trembling in my hand. Join us, the figures chanted, their voices harmonizing in a chilling symphony. The light seemed to dance around them, casting an otherworldly glow that seemed to blur the line between reality and the supernatural. As I stepped into the circle, a surge of energy coursed through me, a sensation that was both exhilarating and terrifying. The figures reached out, their fingers brushing against my skin, their touch cold and electric. And then, as if in a trance, I began to chant along with them, my voice melding with theirs in a haunting melody that seemed to transcend time and space. The forest around us seemed to come alive, the trees swaying in rhythm to our words, the wind carrying our song into the night. But just as quickly as it had begun, the chanting ceased the figures dissipating like mist in the wind. I stood alone in the clearing, the blue light fading, the whisper silenced. A sense of emptiness washed over me, leaving me feeling exposed and vulnerable. The realization of what I had done hit me like a wave. I had been lured into something beyond my understanding, something ancient and powerful. I stumbled back, my heart heavy with regret and fear. The wind howled around me, a mournful sound that seemed to echo my own sense of loss. As I returned to the cabin, the darkness seemed to close in around me, a reminder that some mysteries are best left untouched. The memories of that night would haunt me for the rest of my days, a chilling reminder that the allure of the unknown can lead to a darkness that is impossible to escape. And as I closed the cabin door behind me, I couldn't shake the feeling that the wit aboard had been the key to unlocking a realm of supernatural forces that should have remained hidden. The living room was bathed in the soft glow of the lamp, casting a warm and inviting ambiance. The furniture was arranged neatly and the bookshelves were lined with familiar titles. It was a sanctuary of comfort, a place where I had spent countless evenings relaxing and unwinding. As I settled onto the couch, the coziness of the room enveloped me. 
and I let out a sigh of contentment. The events of the day had left me exhausted, and the living room was a haven of tranquility that I welcomed with open arms. I picked up a book from the coffee table and began to read, the words transporting me to a different world. The gentle ticking of the clock on the wall accompanied the turning of pages, and I felt myself sinking deeper into the story. But then, as if a whisper in the back of my mind, a feeling of unease began to gnaw at me. I glanced around the room, my senses heightened by an inexplicable apprehension. The lamp's light seemed to waver, casting elongated shadows that danced on the walls. I shook my head, chiding myself for my overactive imagination. It was just fatigue, I reasoned, a trick of the light that my tired mind had blown out of proportion. I returned my attention to the book, determined to lose myself in its pages once more. But then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement, a fleeting glimpse of something shifting on the periphery of my vision. I turned towards it, my heart quickening, my breath catching in my throat. The shadows seemed to coalesce, taking on a form, a shape that defied explanation. I squinted, my eyes widening in disbelief as I tried to make sense of what I was seeing. The form was indistinct, its edges shifting like liquid, as if it was composed of darkness itself. It hovered near the corner of the room, its presence an unsettling intrusion into the familiar surroundings. Who's there? I called out, my voice wavering. No response came, only the silence that seemed to stretch and warp, as if reality itself was shifting. The form remained still, its presence a silent enigma that seemed to watch me with an otherworldly intensity. Fear prickled at the edges of my mind, but curiosity got the better of me. I set the book aside and slowly stood up, my gaze fixed on the shadowy figure. It seemed to pulse, as if it had a life of its own, an entity that existed beyond the boundaries of my understanding. With hesitant steps I moved closer to the figure, my heart pounding in my chest. It seemed to shift as I approached, its form elongating and then retracting, as if it was both solid and insubstantial. A sense of dread coiled in my stomach, but a compulsion beyond my control urged me forward. As I stood mere feet away from the figure, I could feel its presence, cold and oppressive like a weight on my chest. It seemed to regard me with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine, its featureless form somehow conveying an awareness that was beyond words. Who are you? I whispered, my voice trembling. The figure remained still, its form undulating a swirling mass of darkness. And then with a sudden burst of movement, it lunged towards me, a surge of inky blackness that seemed to envelop me. I stumbled back, my heart racing, the fear that had been lurking within me now fully realized. A feeling of dread settled over me as I realized that the figure was not simply a shadow. It was something far more sinister, a creature that defied the laws of nature. Its presence was suffocating, a malevolent force that seemed to seep into my very being. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned and ran from the living room, my footsteps echoing in the silence. I burst out of the room, the light of the hallway a welcome reprieve from the abyss that had taken over the space. As I caught my breath, I glanced back at the living room, a room that had once been a place of comfort, now transformed into a realm of terror. The figure had vanished, its presence no longer tangible, but the memory of its malevolent form still lingered in my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that the living room had been violated by a presence that defied explanation. A creature that existed beyond the realm of the known. A force that sought to breach the boundaries between reality and the unseen. The encounter had left an indelible mark on my perception of the familiar. A reminder that even in the most ordinary of places, the shadows can hold secrets that are beyond comprehension. The carnival lights bathed the night in a kaleidoscope of colors casting an enchanting glow over the festive grounds. Laughter and music filled the air, and the scent of popcorn and cotton candy wafted through the breeze. It was a scene of excitement and merriment, a place where joy seemed to blossom in every corner. I walked among the revelers, my heart light and my spirits high. The carnival had always been a special place for me, a world of escape from the mundane routines of life, the thrill of the rides, the tantalizing aroma of fair food, it was a haven of delight that I looked forward to every year. As the night wore on, the crowds grew thicker, the excitement palpable, the lights seemed to shimmer and dance, casting playful shadows that chased after me as I moved through the carnival. The echoes of laughter and the strains of music created a symphony of joy, 
and for a while I was lost in the whirlwind of the festivities. But then, as I turned a corner and ventured into a quieter area of the carnival, a shiver ran down my spine, a sensation that sent a chill through my veins. The lights here were dimmer, their glow flickering as if struggling against an unseen force. The laughter had faded, replaced by an eerie stillness that seemed to hang in the air like a shroud. I looked around, my heart racing, a sense of unease settling over me. The shadows seemed to stretch and twist, taking on a life of their own. A figure, a silhouette that seemed to materialize from the darkness, stood at the edge of my vision. I blinked, trying to make sense of what I was seeing, but the figure remained elusive, its form shifting like smoke. Who's there? I called out, my voice trembling. No response came, only the echo of my words bouncing off the empty air. The figure seemed to draw closer, its presence an unsettling intrusion into the tranquility of the moment. I stumbled back, my heart pounding, a primal instinct telling me to flee from whatever was before me. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned and ran, my footsteps echoing in the stillness. The carnival seemed to stretch and twist around me, the familiar sights distorted by a sense of unreality. I looked over my shoulder, the figure still there, its form now more defined, a shadow that defied the natural laws of light and darkness. As I sprinted through the carnival, the lights and sounds became a cacophony of chaos, a nightmare version of the enchanting scene I had entered just hours before. The figure pursued me, its presence a looming threat that seemed to grow with each passing moment. I ducked behind a carousel, my breath ragged, my mind a whirlwind of fear and confusion. The figure continued to approach, its form flickering and shifting as if it was composed of shifting shades. Its eyes, glowing orbs of light, locked onto mine a cold sensation washing over me. Stay away, I shouted, my voice a mixture of desperation and defiance. But the figure paid no heed to my words, its movement relentless, a silent pursuit that seemed to defy all reason. I scrambled to my feet, my heart pounding, and resumed my escape through the carnival grounds. As I ran, the world seemed to warp and distort around me, the boundaries between reality and nightmare becoming blurred. The lights cast grotesque shadows, the laughter morphed into eerie whispers that seemed to taunt me, and the rides became twisted versions of their former selves. With each step, the figure drew closer, its presence a haunting reminder that I was not alone in this eerie realm. My breath came in ragged gasps, my body driven by a primal instinct to survive. And then, as if guided by some unseen force, I reached the entrance of the carnival. The lights, the music, and the laughter all returned, as if the nightmare had never occurred. The figure, however, remained at the edge of my vision, a shadowy specter that watched from the darkness. I stumbled out of the carnival grounds, my heart still racing, my mind a tumultuous sea of emotions. The figure's pursuit had ended, but its presence lingered, a haunting memory of a night that had veered into the realm of the supernatural. As I walked away, the lights of the carnival fading behind me, I couldn't shake the feeling that the figure had been more than a mere shadow, that it was a manifestation of something beyond comprehension, a force that existed on the fringes of reality. The carnival had transformed from a place of delight to a realm of terror, a reminder that even in the most joyful of places, darkness can emerge, and the shadows that lurk within can be awakened by a haunting presence that defies explanation. The hum of the engine and the rhythmic rumble of the wheels against the asphalt were my constant companions as I drove my truck down the lonely highway. The darkness outside stretched out endlessly, broken only by the occasional glint of a distant star. The road ahead seemed to disappear into an abyss, a path to the unknown that I traversed night after night. I had been a truck driver for years, crisscrossing the country, delivering cargo to far-flung destinations. The solitude of the road had become my comfort, the ever-changing scenery my only connection to the world beyond my cab. But on this particular night, the feeling of isolation was stronger than ever. The radio crackled to life, a voice breaking through the static reporting an accident up ahead. The road was closed and I had no choice but to take an alternate route, an unfamiliar detour that promised to be a labyrinth of narrow lanes and winding paths. As I navigated the dark and twisting roads, an eerie unease settled over me. The forest seemed to press in on all sides, the shadows cast by my headlights dancing on the trees like phantom figures. I shook off the feeling, chiding myself for letting my imagination run wild. But then, out of the corner of my eye I saw a movement, 
a fleeting glimpse of something darting across the road. I slammed on the brakes, my heart racing, my breath catching in my throat. The truck came to a shuddering stop, the silence of the night engulfing me. I peered out into the darkness, my eyes straining to catch any sign of movement. But the road was empty, the only sound the distant whisper of the wind through the trees. I shook my head, convincing myself it had been a trick of the light, a product of my tired mind. With a deep breath, I eased my foot off the brake and continued on the road. The unease remained, a lingering presence that refused to be ignored. I turned up the radio, hoping that the voices and music would dispel the feeling of isolation that had settled over me. But then, as if in response to my attempts to drown out the unease, the radio crackled and died, leaving me with nothing but the sound of the engine and the haunting hush of the night. Panic surged within me, and I fumbled with the controls, trying to coax the radio back to life. As I focused on the radio, a movement in my peripheral vision caught my attention. A figure standing at the edge of the road, partially obscured by the shadows. My heart pounded in my chest as I stared, my breath catching in my throat. The figure was tall and gaunt, its form hunched as if burdened by some unseen weight. Its eyes glowed in the darkness, two points of eerie light that seemed to pierce through the night. A chill swept over me as I realized that this was the same presence I had seen dart across the road earlier. Fear paralyzed me, my hands trembling on the steering wheel. The figure took a step forward, its movement slow and deliberate. Every instinct screamed at me to flee, to reverse the truck and get as far away as possible from this haunting apparition. But then, as if guided by some unexplainable force, I felt a compulsion to stay. The figure's gaze seemed to hold me in place its intensity a silent command that I couldn't ignore. My heart raced as I watched the figure draw closer, its steps deliberate, measured. I rolled down the window, my voice barely above a whisper. Who are you? What do you want? The figure remained silent, its eyes locked onto mine. And then, with a sudden surge of movement, it stepped into the beam of my headlights. Its features were haggard, its skin pallid and stretched taut over bone. Its lips parted, revealing teeth that seemed too long and sharp. A primal terror gripped me and I slammed my foot on the gas pedal, the truck lurching forward. The figure was inches from my window, its hand reaching out as if to touch me. I sped away, the engine roaring, my heart pounding like a drum. As the figure vanished into the darkness behind me, a sense of dread settled over me. The encounter had been unlike anything I had ever experienced, a haunting presence that defied explanation. I drove on, the road stretching out ahead, the memories of that night's encounter etched into my mind like a chilling scar. The hum of the engine and the rhythmic rumble of the wheels continued to fill the cab, but now they were accompanied by the memory of the figure, the enigmatic and haunting presence that had crossed my path on that desolate stretch of road. The isolation of the highway had taken on a new meaning, a reminder that even in the emptiness of the night, the unknown could emerge from the shadows to confront and unsettle the most steadfast of travelers.